Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create a URL to some file data that you have in JavaScript. So there are two ways of doing this. You can create a data URL or a blob URL. So I'm going to be showing you both ways of doing that and also when to use one or the other method. So let's start by creating a data URL. The data in this case is coming from a user selected file via an input in the HTML and in JavaScript I've already selected that input and I want to get the file data when a user has selected a file so you can do that by adding an event listener to the input element listening for a change event this will fire the callback function every time the user selects a new file so the first thing that i want to do here is to get the file that the user has selected so the file will be available on the files property in a file list which is an array like object to support the possibility of multiple files so for a single file it's going to be at index position zero now we can create a data url for this file using the native file reader so to create a new file reader you call the file reader object placing the new keyword before it so it's an object constructor so doing that will create a new object of its type and the reading of the file it is not instantaneous so you can wait for the result by adding an event listener to the file reader that you've created the result of the file reading will be available on the result property on the file reader and you can make that a data url by passing the file data into the read as data url method on the file reader that you've created so i'll select an image first of all so this is what a data url looks like it's very long because it contains the data itself in base64 format which is string encoded so what you get with data url is a stringified version of the file data that also functions like a regular url and it doesn't just work for images it works for any type of file so i just selected a pdf and a data url has been created for it. Now, as I mentioned, you can use a data URL just like a regular URL. So you can use it, for example, to set the SRC on an element. In this case, I'll do it for an image because that's very common. And doing this, it allows you to view the contents of the image on the page because when a user selects an image or file, no URL exists for it, so you can use a data URL for that. Another very common use is to use a data URL to set as the href of an anchor element to trigger the download of an edited image using the HTML canvas or some other process that outputs file data. Now you could do this with a blob URL as well. I'll be showing you how to create one in a few moments, but the big advantage of a data URL is that the data it's in string format so you can use it in any kind of process that accepts string data the big one is local storage so local storage only accepts string data you couldn't ordinarily pass file data through there so doing this you can store any kind of file data in local storage in string format so to prove that i'll set the src value of the image that i'm displaying on the page to the retrieve value of the file item in local storage so usually you'd be setting the item on one page and then retrieving it on another or in another user session but it's still the same process of passing it through local storage that i followed here and as you can see from this result it passed through there successfully something else that you can do is to store a data URL inside a JSON object. So a JSON object 
it's just string data in a recognized format so you can't store a file directly on a json object but you can store a data url on one so you could pass this json string object with the file and additional data through local storage because it's in string format or you could send it to a server so i won't write out all the code to post json data to a server i'll just paste some that i've prepared so i'm making the request to a live test server that will echo back the data i send it in the response and if you're sending json data it's usually necessary to set a content type header to application json so the server knows how to process the data so if we wait for a response back we should see that it received the json data that we sent to it so you can see from the data property here that the server it received the json data including the file data in json format now something to take into account is that file data read to data url format it's about 30 percent larger than the original file data so i log the size of the original file data via its size property and i can get the size of the data url by passing it into a blob which is a data container that has a size property on it so i log that to the console now if i select a file you see that the second log to the console for the data url size is greater than the first for the original file data and for the other file similar result so sending the original file data would usually be more efficient but if you need to send file data in json format then you have this option available to you so the advantages of a data url is that the data is stored in the url itself so when you pass around the url you're not just passing around a url like you would to an external file you're also passing around the data and it's in string format so as you saw from the examples you can use it wherever you want to represent a file in string format the downside is that it reads the file data into a new less efficient string encoded format which allows you to pass the data around but if instead you just want a temporary url to some file data that you have in the browser in memory then instead you can create a blob url so i'm going to comment out the code where i created the data url because you don't need the file reader to create a blob url because you're not reading the file data this time you're just creating a link to the file in browser memory so to do that you call the create object url method on the native url interface and you pass in there the file data that you want to create a blob url for and the return value that is your blob url so to test this i'm going to set the blob url as the src value of the image that i created earlier and i'll also log the blob url itself to console so if we take a look at what this produces in the browser so we see the image and we set the src value of the image element to this now this url is valid as long as the file is held in browser memory so it would actually work on another page as long as the original page is not refreshed because the image is still in browser memory but if I refresh this page and I try to enter the URL again, it's no longer valid. So you can't pass around a blob URL like you can a date URL because it assumes that the file exists in browser memory, which it doesn't for anyone except the user whose browser it was created on and only until the page that created it is closed or refreshed. Now, because of this, you might think that a date URL is preferable over a blob url but in fact if you want to create a url for some file data for use on the current page it's actually more efficient to use a blob url because it doesn't involve 
any reading of the file. It just links directly to the file. A best practice tip when working with blob URLs is if you're finished with a particular URL, pass it into revoke object URL because the entire time that a blob URL exists, the file that it links to is being held in browser memory. So doing this prevents it being held there when it's no longer necessary. So if you want to create a URL for use on the current page, it's probably better to choose a blob URL because it involves no processing of the file. But if you want to create a URL that is valid beyond the current page and also allows you to pass around file data in string format, like we saw with local storage, you can use a data URL for that. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.